All right. Welcome to Beacon of Hope Ministries tonight. Uh, this is our weekly Bible study on Wednesday night. I'm Pastor Marsha McAllister, the guy in the the uh, neon neon pink shirt is my associate pastor, Pastor Jim. We have several people on Zoom with us that are part of our ministry, and several right here in the house. Uh, we started a series on Sunday morning three weeks ago called Walking in Wisdom. You can catch those posts on our YouTube channel. And you can also catch any of these Bible studies in this current series, which is the book of Job, uh, also on our YouTube channel. Thanks to Madeline, who puts them on at the end of each one of these. Uh, our YouTube channel can be found by opening YouTube and go to capital letters B-O-H-M, stands for Beacon Vote Ministries, space global. That's how to access our YouTube channel. Please subscribe if you go there and watch some of these posts. Comments would be great, whatever you can do. So, we are in the book of Job, and again, this is week three, I think, on Job, or week four? Three? One. Two. I did the introduction. You've done two, uh, two weeks, so it's week three. Week, week three. We're in the book of Job. So, if you missed the first couple here, go back and watch those. It will help you understand where we're at. So, just to give you a little bit of a recap before we start uh, interacting here with our gang. Um, let's go to Job chapter 5, and, um, and we have that from, from Job chapter 4, one of jo uh, Job's best friends, he has three best friends, they are Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, Zophar. that's one that always reminds me of a prescription, yeah, and so <laughs> these guys, these guys come and visit Job because they find out that this man who has had great wealth, 10 children, all kinds of animals and livestock, and is known all over their current world, which by the way, this all happened about 4,000 years ago. And I wanna remind everybody that Job was the third son of Issachar, which was one of Jacob's 12 sons. So Job is in the line, this whole line here, the, the uh, priestly line here. And so Job, as we see at the very beginning, we have the curtain pulled back, which I love this, in Job 1, and we see that Satan goes before God and says, and he, he says, where you been? He goes, oh, I've been roaming around the earth. He goes, what have you been doing? Uh, and he's, oh, I've just been, you know, messing around. And God says, have you ever seen my good servant Job? I mean, this guy, he really loves me, God says to Satan. Satan goes, ah, I can, I can do some things that will make him not love you and walk away yeah. from you. And that's where the book of Job starts. We are able to see that God gave Satan permission. Permission. Everybody, if you write things in your book, write down that word. God allowed the devil to cause problems in Job's life. That was something that he gave permission to do, right? So well, everybody finds out, Job's friends, three friends, they come from far away, and they are so upset about what they see when they get to see Job that they sit down on the ground at the end of, verse, of chapter two, they sit down on the ground, verse 13 of Job chapter 2, on the ground with Job for seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his pain was very great. Wow. So these are his best friends. Okay, they come, they sit, and they, they, they can't even talk. They can't leave. Why? Because we talked last week, he's covered in boils by now. So he's head to foot boils. He is miserable. Remember in Job 2, his wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? That was a real loving wife. And so... Well, she uh, probably said that out of sympathy for how badly he felt. Well, I think there's more to it than that. I don't think there was no sympathy. I think, I don't think she so. lost her children too. Don't forget, yes, she is yes. his wife. Right? Yes. But let's look at, let's start. That's a good place to start. Let's start with Job chapter 2, verse 10 again. So when he, she says this to him, he says to her, you speak as one of the spiritually foolish women speaks, ignorant and oblivious to God's will. Okay? I'm in the Amplified Bible. Shall we indeed accept only good from God 
and not also accept adversity and disaster. In spite of all this, Job did not sin with words from his lips. Now, here Job is saying, God has put this disaster on me. That's what he's implying right here. Okay? So now we are, we've gone through chapter 4. Let's go to uh, chapter 5. And um, Eliphaz is still speaking. These guys are long-winded, his three friends. And um, I want to start down in uh, verse 8 of Job 5. Because here we see some interesting things. That Eliphaz now is actually counseling Job. Job chapter 5, verse 8. Job 5, 8. Okay? And he is saying some very important things. But we're going to get at the root of what he's talking about. Job 5, 8. Eliphaz says, as for me, I would seek God and inquire of him, and I would commit my cause to God, who does great and unsearchable things, marvelous things without number. Here Eliphaz is, is showing us that he's a believer. He believes in God, right? And he's talking about the greatness of God. So from verse 8 to verse 16, we see a, all of these ways. It's really a tenfold picture of the greatness of God here. Nothing wrong with what Eliphaz says here. Do you find uh, anything wrong with that, PJ? Only his attitude. His attitude. That's exactly right. I mean, but it, his statements are true. Go ahead. Statement, yeah, I mean, and that's what we find so often through the book of Job. A lot of what they say is true, but it doesn't apply to Job. Right. Because they don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Verse 8 is fine, but when I read it, it's like, well, as for me, Job, if I was in your shoes... That's how it's I being would, spoken. Yeah, I would seek God. Like, like Job hasn't sought God. Right. See, that's an accusation right there. Does everybody see that? I mean, Eliphaz is just... Yeah, it's a yeah. true statement. We all need to seek God and inquire of him, commit our cause to God, who, who does do these wonderful, marvelous things for us. Yes. That's a true statement, but sometimes we can say truth with an attitude. No. Really? Yeah. With an attitude? Well, the, best, the very best example I can think of is on Ball State's campus. Uh-huh. These two, at least my freshman year when I was there, they may have been there when you were there, um, most hateful gospel preachers I'd ever seen, um, condemning every student to hell. And it, most of the, st I mean, it got people angry. I mean, it may have gotten a few to think. Me, I thought, that's not the way you present the gospel. Most of these people, A, don't believe in hell. And B, figure they're living it right now, so what's the difference? Yeah. I mean, you're just shouting and angry, and you're going to go to hell, and blah, 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 blah. Let's have a comment on that point. That is a really good point. Betty, you want to comment on that? Because a lot of people, that is the attitude they take, the, the super religious people, quote, unquote. Well, and I think a lot of them, they uh, have religious spirits about them. Yes. Is that they have a... They have. They think their perspective right. is the right answer, and the only right answer, and the only answer that they can that they can give, uh, that they're greater than thou, and yeah. that they feel like that. You know, the the fire and brimstone is that. Um, uh, you know, hell's going to come down. Well, God didn't talk that way. He 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 spoke of love and acceptance and exactly. kindness. Yes. And um, respect, integrity, yeah. and all of these things that those people really needed to get in touch with the Holy Spirit and begin to speak what God would have them say, not what man would have them no, say. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Allie, your comments on this about Eliphaz's attitude and even though he's saying some good things about God, there's a little something wrong here. Well, it just goes to how we are, we may be very quick to judge based on outer appearance. Yes. Uh, as Pastor Jim said, we do, you we? know, here these three friends um, were just very quick to be judgmental. Yes. And uh, as we were reading, we, we they were attributing his condition to a sin that he had. had that committed. is exactly right. If y'all need to write that down. Eliphaz is basically saying, you're in this mess 
because you are a sinner. You've done some bad stuff. Go ahead, Allie. Uh, no, and so that's that was pretty much it. The comment I wanted to make is that we, we need to be careful to not be, to not be so judgmental and holier than thou. Right. Because we do more harm than, than good. Exactly. And we're going to pick back up on that judging point here in a little while again. Um, so let's, uh, Madeline, you, you, Pat, go ahead. I saw your hand. I see that hand. Well, God, God corrects those who need correction. And that's what a lot of people believe that. They believe that God is, causes you to be corrected because you did something wrong. And, Good point. and that's another part of him saying this stuff is because he's looking at it from that point of view that he must be corrected. That's exactly right. Well, so that's that in verse 17. We're going to verse 17 is where I'm going next. Can I, can I make a comment? About yeah, this? well, Job 5, 17. Go ahead. Um, James 1, 19 and 20. Yeah. Understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to hear, yeah. be a careful, thoughtful listener, slow to speak, a speaker of carefully chosen words mm -hmm. and slow to anger, patient, reflective, forgiving. For the resentful, deep-seated anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God, that standard of behavior he requires of us. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. Did y'all get that reference again? James 1? James chapter 1, nine, verses 19 and 20. Let's go to Proverbs 3, 11 and 12, right where we were kind of last Sunday, but I did not teach these two verses, but they fit right here perfectly. Proverbs 3. 3, 11 and 12. Okay, and it says this, I'm in the Amplified Bible. My son, do not reject or take lightly the discipline of the Lord. Now in parentheses right there it says, learn from your mistakes. If you take notes, write that down. Learn from your mistakes and the testing that comes from his correction through discipline, nor despise his rebuke. For those whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Now, if you take notes, write that down. The one that God loves, he corrects. Notice he does, the word punish is not there. It does not say, for those whom the Lord loves, he punishes. There's a difference between correction or chosen the right way. and punishment. Madeline, you want to comment on that? Are you there, Madeline? Maybe not. Maybe we lost her. Okay, maybe she'll come back. She's still there. Are you there, Madeline? Did you want to comment on that? Okay, maybe she took the dog out. Let's go back to Job 5.17. Behold how happy and fortunate is the man whom God reproves. Now this is Eliphaz talking, Job 5.17. So do not despise or reject the discipline. Okay, it doesn't say correction here. Of the Almighty, subjecting you to trial and suffering. Okay, trial and suffering. Does everybody see this point? Because... Uh, Anybody want to comment on this? Because this is what Eliphaz is saying. You're blessed because you're going through trial and suffering because God is disciplining you. Difference in words here. Discipline is a lot different than correction. Okay, Betty, do you have a comment on that? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, okay. we feel like sometimes that we are being picked on. By God? By God. And it's yeah. not God that's doing it it's yes. it's just like what you know god allowed yes job to be to be tested and we can't have a victory without a battle right so when we go through battles is that what job did is that the word sometimes when someone's going through a battle we may not know what they're going through right so what we have to do is the words that we speak may they bring may they be uplifting and encouraging yes, and, yes. And, and give them comfort and and strength through the words that we speak yes. is that we think that we're um you know correction is uh can be painful it's the pruning right it's because our father who are like we had an earthly father we were disciplined by them 
So what our Heavenly Father does is when uh, he corrects us, and we have to be open for correction yeah, because that helps us to grow. It yeah. does help it's us. It's a learning grow. process. It's a learning process. Madeline, can, are you back? I'm here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Did you want to comment on any of this? Correction versus punishment? Not yet, because I just came in at the tail end of that. So. Okay. All right, let, let me catch up a little. Well, that's fine. We'll yeah. go to Megan. Megan, do you want to comment on any of that? Sure, I will. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep, we can. You know, we have to, I think it's all about how we view our situation. We, in learning about how Job's wife and Job's friends approached him, this is a, there are ways not to approach a situation. Right. And, you know, even though, like myself right now, all of the things that I'm going through, you have to step back and step away from mm -hmm. the drama that the devil's putting in front of you. Yeah. Uh, it could, could be friends, could be family, uh, it could be anything, but you have to learn to have a different perspective on your correction. Right. And when you can change your, shift your mindset and says that he inflicts pain yeah. and he binds up and gives relief. Now, there are times, and you can read them in the Bible, where God did directly inflict pain when he sent the the Israel, when the, the Judahites into um, into exile in Babylon. Right. That was a direct, but that's but that's only reserved for God's judgment. Right. When God judges a nation or a person for doing something, um, you know, like Nadab and Abihu in in uh, Leviticus. Nadab and Abihu, okay. The sons of the sons of Aaron that offered oh, okay. strange oh, fire yes, before yes, the Lord, he struck them dead. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, that's, that's. And if you and just as a reminder, that wasn't just confined to the Old Testament. Yep. Acts chapter five. Ananias and Sapphira lied yeah, to the Holy they Spirit, did, and, they, and God struck them down. Hey, good point. Um. Good point. But that again, it's only for judgment, right? And to have, and, and as I'm I'm reading through the book of Isaiah, and here's a little plug. I'm doing the book of Isaiah in my blog. God is so patient. Yes, He is. He's um, patient with us. That's what I mean. That's that's one of the big points I'm getting out of Isaiah. God's patience. He does not. It says He does not willingly inflict. He does not willingly do that. He doesn't want to do it. But if people rebel enough, then yeah, he will inflict the pain. But he's still there to heal. In Isaiah, you have the the, uh, the prophecies of the judgment of Judah. 
And then two verses later, you've got the promise of restoration. Right. So he, he inflicted the pain, the healing, the wounding, the healing. Okay, good point. Allie, let's go to you about this. picture a pinball in a pinball machine we try and go the wrong way and God bumps us right to get us back on the right path on track. Okay. Um, or like we're in a like in a hallway or something and we keep bumping up against the wall well yeah that's gonna cause pain but we're in that hallway the narrow way if you will yeah because that's the way God wants us to walk. And sometimes we want to stray outside of that. Yeah, we do. And he's going to put up a wall that we run into. Right. To keep us from doing that. And he does it so that we mature. So that's correction. Mm -hmm. Betty. Well, you know, one of the things that when you look at pain is that there are different aspects of pain. Mm -hmm. Is the, the pain of death. Yeah. The pain of, of an illness. But I, I switched over to the transa translation in the Message Bible. It says, no matter what the calamity, the evil can't touch you. Wow. Because we have the protection of God upon us. Mm -hmm. And even in our correction, yes, there is pain. But again, he touches us and he heals us because he loves us that Amen. much. But, but we're also taking it too far when it comes to Job because... This is what the guy was saying. He's being chastised because of what he did something wrong. Well, he didn't do anything wrong. I'm exactly. just getting to that point. You are forward. right on. Exactly. So we're taking this too far in the wrong direction. I, I'm God, just going that God direction. God was not back. judging him in that direction. Ju God was not judging Job. His friends were judging him. Okay? And, and, and they're they making it look like that. Exactly. God was doing right. It. Right. But we exactly. look, if you look at it from a perspective of God's perspective, God will never judge us. He he, all, he protects us and he saves us. And what we do as humans is we use the human mind yeah, rather than the heart. Right. And and we can't be very, very judgmental. I was just going to Matthew chapter 7 too. So, uh, Madeline, your comments here. Well, I'm kind of focused on uh, Job 5.17 Blessed is the one whom God collects because I like the comforting uh, aspect of that sentence is that he cares enough about me to mm -hmm. want me to be corrected, to to be on the right path, to right. to be tested or allowed testing to happen or whatever whatever the you know the ills are that might that comes, fall comes me or around. anyone else so that I can I can achieve glory for him no, and and receive him. blessings Save from him. Him. So, so that's the because it's it's all kind of difficult you know reading this it's it's hard to um this one well this is deep stuff that, uh, very deep this is deep stuff i agree madeline yeah. is there is was there something else you want to say right there no no so what eliphaz is trying to say is a point that pat made a minute ago in that eliphaz is trying to say there must be something Job, you've done because god is is putting all this on you he's disciplining you now, the word discipline in my Amplified Bible, it says, verse 17, how happy and fortunate is a man whom God reproves. So do not despise or reject the discipline of the Almighty. But then in parentheses, it defines that discipline as subjecting you to trial and suffering. So, um, okay, so Matthew 7, verses 1, 2, 3, let's run there a minute. 
Uh, that's exactly right. Pat just mentioned it, and I had it in my notes that we were going to go there. So in in Matthew 7, verse 1, it's the words of Jesus. And I always like to find the words of Jesus when we have a topic that we're discussing here. And Jesus says here in Matthew 7, 1, Do not judge and criticize and condemn others unfairly, unfairly, with an attitude of self-righteous superiority, as though assuming the office of a judge, so that you will not be judged unfairly. For just as you hypocritically judge others when you're sinful and unrepentant, so will you be judged. And in accordance with your standard of measure used to pass out judgment, judge will be measured to you. But verse 3 and 4 is what I wanted to get to. Jesus said, Why do you look at the insignificant speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice and acknowledge the egregious log that's in your own eye. Okay, so what Eliphaz was saying was, Job, we came to comfort you, and we see that you're a real mess, and so obviously you brought this on yourself. That is what I hear Eliphaz saying. And in verse 4 of, of Matthew 7, or how can you say to your brother, let me get the speck out of your eye when there's a log in your own eye? And Jesus goes on to say that's hypocritical. Okay, so let's go with this. Um, Job's answer. Let's let's see what Job has to say about all this. Okay, so we can, could finish chapter 5, but you can read it on your own. Um, and there's some good verses in chapter 5. There's verses that will really bless you. Uh, but we're trying to look at the under, underneath all that, the attitude of the speaker. Here's Job, the new speaker. Everybody ready? Chapter 6. Oh, that my grief could actually be weighed. The word for grief there in the Hebrew is the word K-A hyphen A-S, according to my Bible. And it means this. Here's what Job, Job was saying. Oh, my vexation, my anger, my grief, my indignation, my sorrow. Oh, if it could actually be weighed and placed in the balances together with my tragedy to see if my grief is the grief of a coward. So he is, Job is starting his talk with, you have no idea how bad this is. This is horrible. Okay? Uh, Allie, comment on that because we've all been there, right? When we go, okay, you know what? None of you get how bad I'm suffering. You ever had that right. those feelings? Go ahead, Natalie. And then we'll get go, sure. go around the horn. Sure. Well, we mentioned last week that obviously Job, you know, discloses his his humanity, his frailty. Yes. You know, um, it's though we may be very reverent and be on Sunday, every Sunday on time, never miss a Bible study. Always praising God. There That's are, all of there you. There are no times when yeah. we, um, you know, become ill or go through hardship that, you know what, our, our hearts sometimes fail us. Our lips will even disclose what the heart is thinking or feeling at that point. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so he shows us that, listen, you know, even though I am considered a righteous man and none other like me and you know, here in the land of us, um, I'm frail, and, and uh, you know, it hurts. I'm human, uh, and, and what I'm going through is, is difficult. That's right. Right on. It's exactly right. Did you all notice it's the land of us, not the a land of Oz? Yeah. Uh, Madeline, you want to comment on any of that? Sure. Um, I like uh, what this says in my study notes here, uh, Job's reply to Eliphaz had three key points. Number one, you're giving me all this advice without sympathizing with my situation. Right. What? what? Two, your criticisms are not based on fact, but only on your own experience. Okay, wait a minute. Slow down, because this is excellent. Write these down. I love that from your study Bible. You got the NIV study Bible? Yeah. Okay. So, number one, Job, go ahead with those three again. Go ahead. Start over. He said, you're giving me all this advice without sympathizing with my situation. Okay, that's good. So number one, Job starts out with his talk and he says, 
yeah, thanks for the advice, but nobody understands what I'm going through. How many of us have felt that? We have, we have, we think, yeah. if they only knew what I'm living in. Right? Okay, what was number two, Madeline? Your criticisms are not based on fact, but only on your own experience. Okay, excellent. Guys, we have all thought that. Yeah, if you, yeah, thanks for your criticism, but uh, that's just you your experience that you just don't know what I'm feeling. What's number three? It says you still have not answered my basic question. Why am I suffering like this? Ah, that's number three. Okay, so now he's saying to Eliphaz, uh, well, thanks for your talk, but you haven't answered my question. Why is this happening to me? Okay, how many times, I mean, have you heard, you, yes. why, when there's a book written, why, why do bad things happen to good people? Yeah, why me? Why me? Or if you do this, this won't happen. If you should have done this, you should have done that. this, right? We are all good at correcting each other, correct? Not our bang, because we don't do that really. But, Bernie, do you have anything you'd like to add? I didn't mean to step over you there. Smack people upside the head with the logs in their eyes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to pass. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, slap people up against the head with the logs in our own, logs eyes. In our own eyes. After we pull the log out of our eyes. Yeah, that kind of hurts, I can tell. Oh, the beam's better. That beam, whoa. Uh, so this is, those are exactly right, Madeline. Did you want to finish your point? I like you, in fact, you read that. Those are right. Go ahead. Well, just that it finishes up that, you know, regardless of his suffering, he was still determined to remain true to God while seeking the answer. Yeah, that's good. Right, well, up to a point, I think. Um, yeah. There comes a point later on where he does finally just have enough. Well, let's look at Job chapter 6, verse 9. Or 8. Let's start with 8. He, now he's pontificating, right? Um, verse 8 of Job 6. Yeah. Oh, that my request would come to pass and that God would grant me the thing that I long for. What do you think he longed for? Now I have all of this go back in time and have all of this not happen. What did he long for? Does anybody know? Yeah. For the pain to stop. For the pain to stop. What? Uh, anybody else have an opinion? Yeah. Jim's right. He wanted to die. He wanted to die. Yeah. He yeah. wanted to give up. He never even wanted to exist ever. Like, no. Yeah, he wanted to curse the day he was yeah. born. Yeah, he wanted to curse the day that he was born. Or he he was even conceived. Was he was so, I mean, now this is getting low, okay? It's not just, oh, guys, pray for me. I'm having a rough time. No. This was, I want to die. Well, Go ahead, PJ. Yeah, he says in verse 9, I wish nine. he would please God to crush me. Crush me. That he would let loose of his hand and just cut me off. Then I would still have consolation because I'm going to be dead and in Sheol, apparently, is what he was thinking. Yeah. And I would jump for joy amid unsparing pain that I have not denied or hidden the words of the Holy One. Hmm. Madeline, do you have anything in your NIV study Bible about this that Job wanted to die? It says, it says in his grief, Job wanted to give in to be free from his discomfort and to die. But God did not grant Job to quest. He had a greater plan for him. Exactly. Our tendency, like Job's, is to want to give up and get out when the going gets rough. To trust God in the good times is commendable, but to trust him during the difficult times tests, tests us to our limits and exercises our faith. It, that is excellent. Guys, that is what we do. Betty, comment. Well, I think that we... I think that we've all experienced some sort of calamity or problems, and I can speak from my own life, yes. is that you can only, a human body can only take so much. I agree. The heartache, the hurt, but the one thing that we had to do, and I think Job did too, is that there are times in our life where we want to give up. Right. But we keep focused on, on, on the Lord. We keep our eyes on Jesus and not on the situation. I've had to do it in my own life. Sure. My daughter, we're doing that. She's doing that now right. too. And it's like um, we still have enough strength inside of us. God gives us enough strength to hold on. The Holy Spirit gives us that will to want to push forward. 
because we know he has a purpose. It's right on. Good. Megan, you want to comment on any of that? No. No, it's not my voice. Megan? She may be driving, so. Okay. Pastor Jim, go ahead. Oh, yeah, and see, that's. I'm here. Oh, okay. okay, did you want to comment on all of that? That Joe wanted to die? Yes, sorry, I was working on the uh, I 96. Um, yes, because we have, I'm sure everyone can attest to the fact that they've been in the same situation as Joe. That it would be easier just to give up. It would be easier to say, God, I'm just done, I'm ready to go, get me out of here. And I, I mean, I've been there, just like Mom said most recently, you know, with everything that's going on, I, I've been there. And it, because it, it, whether it's physical or emotional pain, it hurts. Right. And it, the, the human spirit, the, the human body, we feel like we can only withstand so much. But as we're going to see it unfold, as we all know it unfolds with Joe, is that when we stand firm and we stand in a, in a position of being victorious, right? We, we will survive. Even though our human mind and Satan will tell us otherwise, I'm here to tell you from my own perspective, from all the things that I've been through, no matter what comes our way, no matter whether it's as bad as Joe or we're on our deathbed or wherever we are, God is right beside us. And even yeah. though Joe was completely honest with God and said, God, I'm just ready to die. He, he shared, he, even though he was hurting, he still kept his communication with the Lord. He never stopped. Even though he was complaining, he kept open communication with his father. It's a really good and point. Uh, that's a good point. Job, write that down, people. He kept his communication with God. Go ahead. Well, Jim. one thing I want to go back to what uh, one thing Betty had, had said. One advantage, praise God, that we have that Job did not, is we have the Holy Spirit yeah. living within us. Right. A for discernment. I mean, I think we can get a little more discernment about the situations than Job was yeah. able to. Um, but plus, there's just that that power and the wisdom that we get from the Holy Spirit. That help us through this. Although I agree, I mean, I've been at that point where I just just finish me off, take me home. I'm ready to go. I just I'm just done with it. Can everybody agree? Yeah, a Betty? lot. A lot of people. There's a cutoff. They can only handle so much, but God knows we can handle more. He knows because He's provided the way. Yes. Remember, one of the things I told you last week or the week before is we are going to have what I'm calling Rama takeaways. Yes. And those are. Oh, you get right there. They are scriptures that you need to put in your notes and hang on to. And the one from last Sunday is the same one for tonight. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes. That's your rhema, one of your rhema takeaways tonight. Philippians 4.13. It was my mother's favorite verse. Go ahead, Pat. Well, it's the same same as you must be abased before you're abound. You must be brought low before yeah. you can be brought up. What? Okay, let's talk about the benefits of going through suffering. You learn from it. You help others. You're able to help others that are going through the same thing you went through. You know, All right. Get through it yeah. Okay. Yeah. And okay, here's your second Rayma takeaway then uh, that just came up, and we're just going to go with it. One. Yeah. I'm trying to get there. <laughs> second Corinthians. I got some eight bookmarks in here. Second Corinthians chapter one is your second Rhema takeaway for tonight. By the way, for some of you who may say, what is Rhema? Rhema is the word of God that just comes out and hits you in the head, right? And you know, wow, that was from God. That was for me. That verse is for me. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse two and three. And I'm in the Amplified Bible. Grace to you and peace. Now in the Amplified, it says inner calm and spiritual well-being. Okay, Paul is saying you can have these things. Inner calm and spiritual well-being from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, so key to your spiritual growth. Blessed, in parentheses, gratefully praised and adored 
be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comforts. Well, I guess we got to do verse 4 also. Yeah. Yes. Who comforts and encourages us in every, everybody say every, every trouble, so that we will be able to what? Comfort, Comfort and encourage those who are in any kind of trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 2, 3, and 4. Those are Rhema takeaways. Go, Madeline. And, of course, that's going to build us up because after coming through our own time uh, of trouble and, you know, feeling the reprieve from that and feeling the relief from that and then being able to help, you know, someone else, that's going to build us up and build our faith and keep us keep us um, built up for the next go-round of some trouble that may come <laughs> in our lives. And, and hopefully it's like, you know, it's honing us. It's, it's, it's getting us to a place where we can go forward and now see that we can handle these times. That's exactly right. Go ahead, Jim. Hebrews chapter 5. Yes, we're getting another Rhema takeaway hot off the press. Hebrews 5. Uh, I'll start with verse 7. In the days of his earthly life, Jesus offered up both specific petitions and urgent supplications for that which, for that which he needed with fervent crying and tears to the one who was always able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission toward God, his sinlessness and his unfailing determination to do the Father's will. Although he was a son who had never been disobedient to the Father, he learned active, special obedience through what he suffered. Suffered. Okay. And having been made, this is verse 9, having been made perfect, uniquely equipped and prepared as Savior, retaining his integrity amid opposition, he became the source of eternal salvation and eternal inheritance to all those who obey him. That's Hebrews 5, 7, and 9. Yeah, and I mean, even Jesus suffered. I mean, yes. think about the agony in the garden. Yes. Um, right. But he learned, that's one of the other things we get from suffering, is we learn obedience and maturity. Right. Perfection. It does work that way. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's why God allows that sometimes, so right. that we can learn from grow it. up. Well, yeah, we right. learn from it, we can mature, we can learn obedience. Megan, you're up. She may not pay the bills. Huh? Go ahead. I'm back. Okay, you want to say anything to all that? Yeah, you know, I know that, um, you know, Pastor Jen mentioned being in the hallway, uh, or we call it the waiting room, is that we all are going to go through this, and then there'll be more we should be in expectation of that because that's that's life. That's life on earth. That's yeah. a that's yeah. the molding that we have to go through to to be able to spread forth God's love. Yeah. And I think it's very important to realize no matter if a man, family or an enemy is facing a trial, is that we need to lead with love. Um, you know, and seeing all of the different things that Job faced, and even from his own wife, which yeah. it, it can happen, but right. we need to be aware of how, even if we're going through our own trials, be aware of how we are showing our love as well. It's, we even in the own trials, other. Right. We're losing you, Megan. We're only getting about every other word, so we'll come back to you. Pat? You know, like, Speak up. like Jim was saying, you know, um, Pastor Jim was saying that you could, uh, Jesus, when he was going to the cross, he could say that he suffered mentally, spiritually, 
physically. Yeah, he did. In all those areas, just like Job here. Exactly Every right. Day, physically, spiritually. He's going through it all, just like Jesus did. Exactly. So it could be a foretelling. Of what well, it is. That is a good. That's a good way to look at it. Job, what I don't know if you all heard her. Pat said that Job, Jesus went through all those areas, physical, spiritual, uh, all of it. Emotional pain on the cross. That Job went through every bit of that. Uh, Allie, I know we're going to lose you in a minute because you got to unload your load. Do you have anything you want to say? That was before he went to the cross. Sure. Um, about that. We can't hear you. Hang on, we're coming back to you in a minute. Ellie, we can't hear you. Yeah, we'll, you're, we're losing you. We'll come right back to you in just a minute. Uh, Betty, any other comment on this? Okay. Becky? Well, if it was easy, we wouldn't learn much from it. Right, that's true. That's a good point. But the things that are the most difficult, we remember. Yeah. And we always think back on it and realize what we should have done. And hopefully we'll carry that knowledge for the next situation if it happens. Right. Okay. That's very true. Um, Job chapter 6 verse 3. Job talks about how heavy his weight is and how bad this really is. And one commentary I read said that Job wanted his friends to understand how very hard his trials were. So he says, hey, if it was as, as weight as a bunch of sand, I mean, it's so heavy. And I think a lot of times our human nature wants others to see how bad we're suffering. And a lot of times people miss it. Yeah. Right? Madeline, you want to comment on that? Maybe your Wi Fi is well, better. A lot of people don't even I do. Right. Um, I, I just have to read this in the study notes. This is, I, I really can relate to this. So, Joe, this is um, from six. Four and five. Job miserably lamented, The arrows of the Almighty are in me. He knew of God's power and rule over creation, so he felt that God had targeted him for suffering. <laughs> when we respond this way to suffering, we serve Satan's strategy. As the enemy of God and his people. I, I just think that's amazing. Uh, okay, Job thought. Uh, that is uh, Job 6, 4, and 5. Job thought God had targeted him for suffering. Uh, let's see if we can get uh, Megan back. Right, can you hear that, Megan? Let's try you again. Don't get her. Okay, Allie? She's not up there. Oh, she got it. Okay. Job thought God had targeted him for suffering. Comment. Okay. Did we lose? And we lost Allie. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Another thought I, I wanted to get here. Well, let's just go back to this point. That, that, what Madeline just read in the NIV is exactly right. Job thought God had targeted him for suffering, and he thought his suffering was the worst possible compared to anybody else's suffering that there ever could be. That's human nature. And that's also human nature, right? Um, let's see, do we have... Look, look at everything that he went through. Look at everything he lost. Oh, my heavens, he lost everything. You know, I, mean, I, I mean, mean, what more could be yeah, what, done what to it? Lose your 10 children, it's all your livestock, yeah. everything, your health, you yeah. have boils from head to toe, you smell. Uh, the only thing he didn't lose was God. That was the only thing he didn't lose. Right. Everything that he went through. That's, the That's only exactly thing he right. Had to give him comfort is holding on to Jesus. Right. But he's thinking God's, you know, God's mad at him, obviously, or he wouldn't be targeting him. Uh, he didn't have Jesus yet, but it is God. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Do we have Allie or Bernie? Yeah. No, they're gone. No, they're there. They're just not. They can't. Uh, they can't. They have a bad thing all. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we could tell. All right. Okay. Just keep listening then. Uh, all right. Go ahead. Um, Madeline, say, is there anything else on that you wanted to add, Madeline? Yeah. yeah Mad. the, the rest of that, these notes are a huge faith builder. It says, as the enemy of God and his people, Satan delights when we become afraid of God and resent him. Mm -hmm. 
Being absorbed with pain and grief makes living and trusting God very difficult. God does not target good people to suffer. Much of suffering comes from natural disasters, accidents due to free will, disease in a fallen world, or a sinful people. Amen. Or themselves. Yeah. Yeah. That is. makes us feel right singled out or we become preoccupied with the why me questions. A strategy to stifle our relationship with God is working. We must not doubt in the dark times of the trial what God has taught us in the light. Uh, Boy, that's good. That's Boy, that's good. I have an atheist former co-worker who really needs to read those study notes because he's always posting on Facebook about, well, if there's evil in the world, there can't be God, you know. Which isn't true. Which is exactly. And those study notes just pointed out yeah. how this stuff happens. Sometimes it's because you just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and you ended up with the virus of some kind. That's right. Or, uh, you invested in some company and then it went bust and you lost money or whatever it could be over and over again. There's all kinds of trials. <laughs> Lies. I mean, life brings opportunities for us to suffer. God says, I know you're suffering, honey. Let me make something good out of that. So what is another Rhema takeaway tonight? One that we've said before, we're going back to it. Romans 8, 28. Let's do it one more time. Put it in your notes. And listen to it very carefully. Paul says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good for, those, for everybody in the whole world? Yes. No. For those, that for those who love God, love God and are called, called according, according to His purpose. purpose. There's two things right there that are keys to things working together for good. So if somebody says to you, well, you know what? I don't care about God, no, no, no. But you know, because I know there's that verse that everything's going to turn out just fine for me. No, not necessarily, honey. No, it may not. It may not. Yeah, they don't want to, they don't want to deal with the stipulation. Right. Uh, so let's go up here to Zoom and see who we can get. Allie or Bernie, can you hear us and would you like to comment? Romans 8, 28 is one of those Raymond takeaways tonight again. Allie, you're burning? Yeah, sure. Um, and I'm sorry, we're going through some really it's okay. funny areas. It's okay. Um, so I just wanted to just quickly say that aren't we just blessed to be living in A, B, and not B, C? Yes. And, 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 and I think yes. that by, by, by saying that we, we have Jesus who obviously embodies who the Lord God is. Right. And, you know, we, we now can have that relationship with God and understand that he is not a punitive God. Right. But have a very loving father. Yes. Who wants the best for us. Who desires that relationship. Uh, yes, he does correct. But we understand now it's from a platform of love. That's right. That he was willing to give his all to bring us into his into his fold and now not not to look at him the way maybe Job or his friends did um, during his discourse that we read in, in these chapters you know we now can have that it's a different relationship that we now can understand how different it is now to to have that relationship and I just wish that um as I was reading, I thought, wouldn't it be something if Job was written during the time of, of Jesus as he was here on earth? Huh. I think we'd get a whole different tune on everything that was said. Right, because of the of the truth that came from Jesus. Uh, earlier when we were right. talking about this thing about punishment and learning from our mistakes, I was thinking about when I raised three teenagers at the same time. So my kids reached like less than two years or right at two years apart. So there was that time frame when they were all kind of teenagers, you know, and going through difficult things. And I remember thinking, they've got to learn this lesson, okay? They're going to, there's going to be a consequence to this action because they have to learn an action. They have to learn a lesson from this. As parents, what we try to do is not let our kids learn these lessons. 
because we don't want them to fall down and, and bust their teeth or whatever. So we are, you know, and so we tend to be very overly protective. Don't let them, you know, because we don't want them to suffer. God allows us, okay, it goes back to week one, what Pastor Jim taught on. It's what Graham Cook says all the time. Write it down if it's not in your notes. If it's in your notes, write it again. God allows in his wisdom what he could easily, he could easily prevent by his power. That certainly pertains to parents and grandparents of teenagers. God allows in his wisdom what he could easily prevent by his power. I'm going around the horn giving every one of you an opportunity to make a comment before we close tonight. Boy, did this go fast or did this go fast? I feel like, I mean, we didn't get woo! It. You had said it on WhatsApp, five, six, maybe seven. Yeah, yeah we no, we didn't get out six. Oh, gosh, guys. There's so many good truths here. All right, Allie, let's go to you and Bernadette in case we lose you. So anything you'd like to comment on here? Oh, I'm just saying, Bob, that, that he holds us in the palm of his hand and nobody, nobody can take us away from that. Beautiful. Love it. Thank you. And thank you and Bernie for joining us. Uh, they are over the road truckers and so they're getting ready to uh, p uh, put a load of, of merchandise somewhere. And so uh, rumor has it it's a whole load of peanuts. So that's, uh, that, God, that smells good. So we're glad you were with us tonight. Ladies, you're just... Go ahead, Bernie. I have my takeaway take from this. Um, I've been praying through this Bible study a lot, and I cried when I heard Job give up. Oh, my gosh. I can't imagine the wind taking your whole family down to the house. I mean, it was just so devastating to read it. It's yeah. so heartbreaking. It he is. lost all these animals lost his children. I mean, it was devastating. And then he, you know, he thought that God was against him. And, right. And and reading that Romans right there at the end, when you said read Romans 8 slowly, it's so true. It's all right there. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Praise God. To them who are the called according to his. Woo! You go, Bernie. <laughs> Right there. Right there. Bernie, that is great. Allie, that is great. Woo! Uh, Matt, is Megan still up there? No. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you both for joining us and, and sharing so beautifully. Uh, Madeline. Well, I, I feel challenged from the information in those uh, notes that says, you know, that, that reminds us that you know, God would never target us for any suffering yes. and that he will be there with the relief if we can just hold fast to our faith in him. And I, I, you know, I want to think about that during those times for me that I will not give the, the devil an inch to, to advance on my grief or my, my anger or my right. doubt because I, you know, I, I just won't allow it. And if I can remember that during those times, then I think that can really cause a lot of strain. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you all. Uh, Pat, any comment? No. Okay. Ber uh, Becky, no? no? Betty? Well, I think that um, no matter what the circumstances of what we feel or see, that the God is working mightily in me. And we have to look at that. Um, when we lost a, a grandson, uh, I did, and Megan lost a son. So I can't imagine losing 10. I mean, if you had oh, you know, 10 oh. children, how one can be devastating, but 10 would be more than I think a, a human being could, could withstand. But with God's strength, he saw him through. So yes, that's right. Guess what? Man has a point. And Pastor Jim, do you have a final comment? Yes, I do. All right, go ahead, Pastor Jim, then we'll hear the poem at the final. Okay, well, my final comment is... Even when we don't see it, he's working. Right. Even when we don't feel him, he's working. That's, That's right. right. Great comment. He never stops. That's one of the songs never stops saying. working. This All right. Nan is our poet laureate. So, Nan, what did God give you tonight? 
God doesn't punish us with things, but correction may come our way. We need to learn from such as we look to him and pray. God is so patient with us, for he loves us so much, we can lean upon him for his gentle, caring touch. God gives us the strength to stand in him. We know we can make it while upon him we depend. God had a greater plan for Job, just as he does with us. I encourage you to hang on while upon God you trust. As you travel this week, you can fill him with you. Please know this one thing, of what you're facing, you'll make it through. Amen. Oh, we love Nan's poems. If you'd like a copy of that, send us a, or if you have a question about Beacon of Hope, send us an uh, email to prayers at bohmglobal.com. Also, you can send your prayer requests there. We have a Facebook prayer group. Uh, you can say, I want to be a part of that. So prayers at bohmglobal.com. Thank you, Nan. Thank you all. This has been an amazing part three of our series on Job. It's been really, really good. Uh, audience, would you please share these posts on Facebook with your, your peeps? Uh, because we just want to get the Word of God out. Uh, that's what we're doing here at Beacon of Hope Ministries. Check us out on our website, bohmglobal.com. And Sunday morning, uh, sermon. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong camera. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Sunday morning, we got two cameras going. Sunday morning at around 11, my sermon comes on, our sermon from Beacon of Hope. Uh, right around 11 on Facebook. Uh, later, it goes on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is capital letters B O H M space global, and go there and check it out. Sunday afternoon, sir. Uh, radio show starts at three. I always put a post on Facebook to tell you how to do that. And so, God bless every one of you. This has been pa pa Pastor. Blah, 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 blah. No, okay, Pastor Marsha and the Beaconite. See you next week. We'll God bless you.